All right. Good afternoon. Great afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, to everyone who is on the conference call uh, line on today, we bless the Lord for another Thursday. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful on today, this Thursday. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Welcome to all of our members, visitors, and friends, you who are here in the Jackson metro area, wherever you may be calling from across this country. We welcome you to our midday prayer period on today, Thursday, March 30th, 2023. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to pray with and for us on today. Deacon McCoy is getting ready to come at this time. Thank you so much, Deacon McCoy, for your faithfulness. She's going to come at this time and give us the names of those on the sick list and those requesting uh, special prayer on today. Deacon McCoy, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Good afternoon, Reverend Tobias, members, visitors, and friends. Our special prayer request for March the 30th, 2023. We're asking for your special prayers for the residents and survivors in Roland due to the catastrophic damages and also in Silver City and in other surrounding towns or counties. Sister Betty Palmer, Sister Ella Buford, Brother Glenn McNeil, Sister Betty Mitchell, Sister Tony Faye Mitchell. We also ask a special prayer for Sister Mabel Hudson and family in the passing of her two first cousins, the sister Josie Marie Williams Otis. The service will be at Roll PLMB Church, Smithdale, Mississippi, Highway 98, Saturday, April the 1st at 1230. Also, the late sister Ursuline Jackson. The service will be Sunday, April the 2nd at Church of Christ in Macomb. We're asking special prayer for Reverend Erwin Todd, the brother of Deacon James Todd. I'm sorry, Reverend Erwin Todd, the brother of Deacon James Todd. He is in Mary Health Hospital. Brother Wibble McCoy and family, the passing of his uncle, Reverend Marcus Butler, the pastor of a major God Christ. Some arrangements are forthcoming. This is Stacey McMartin, Dr. Dolores Wright. He is in Parkway Health and Rehabilitation Center, 230 River Oak Drive, Kingston, Mississippi. Sister Rosalina Deloach, the daughter-in-law of Sister Rose Todd, she has been diagnosed with breast cancer. She's, she's taking chemotherapy at this time. Sister Deloach resides in Phoenix, Arizona. Sister Georgia Bassett, Minister Rachel Mitchell, she is in hospice home care. Sister Maya Thompson, the daughter of Dean Barnes, brother Archie Hamley, brother Larry Stevenson, the brother of Sister Deborah Stevenson. He is in the Yazoo Rehabilitation Center. Sister Annie McClellan, the sister of Sister Stevenson, she resides in West Covina, California. Sister Demetrius Powell, Sister Ruthie Davis, Dr. Hamitian Thompson, Sister Travis, Sister Sandra Cooper, Sister Linda Studaway. Sister Jeannie White, Sister Laverne Chen, Reverend Matthew Blackwell, Sister Carolyn Miller is resting at home after a recent eye procedure. Missionary Dr. Bobby Parker and her two daughters, Sister Brianna Parker and Sister Desiree Day, as they battle cancer, Reverend Durr, Brother Kevin McKnight, he is in River Bridge Hospital in Louisiana. He is the nephew of Sister Carolyn Fleming. Sister Annie Wilson, the sister of Deacon Vernell Fleming. Mother Emma Owens, the aunt of Deacon Vernell Fleming. She resides in Detroit, Michigan. Sister Joan Thomas, Sister Betsy McCoy. Brother Bernard Thompson, he resides in Fort Worth, Texas. The 73rd Numbers of Psalm, verse 26. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. This concludes the special prayer request for March the 30th, 2023. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon uh, McCor, for uh, sharing that information with the body of Christ. Uh, a few announcements that I want to make before we engage in prayer. 
um, today. Uh, this coming Sunday, listen, we are getting ready to enter the month of April. This coming Sunday will be the first Sunday in April. So, Lord, have mercy. Come on out this Sunday as we worship God and receive the Lord's Supper. Uh, the first Sunday in April, this coming Sunday. I want to do this again let me thank all of the members again for how you bless and encourage us. As we celebrated our fifth year anniversary last Sunday, the Lord continues uh, to show himself to be faithful. So thank you. Thank you again to our uh, wonderful Pastors Aid Ministry Committee and all of our members for blessing us and encouraging us this past Sunday. Uh, Bible class will continue Monday, April the 3rd. Uh, questions will be available on the website as well. Listen, we will be wrapping up chapter 8 in Exodus and moving into chapter 9 as we continue to discuss and analyze these various plagues that God uh, caused to fall or rain down on uh, uh, the Egyptian people. Also, let me make this announcement. Our General Missionary Baptist State Convention of Mississippi has been working in the Rolling Forks area uh, so listen, I want to inform you all of, of how busy we have been the last few weeks. You've seen and heard on the news how so many people have been uh, affected. Uh, our state president and myself, uh, we were in the Rolling Fork area this past Saturday, and then yesterday we were there in Rolling Fork. Uh, it's a sad and disturbing situation, but we've learned how to uh, trust God even while we're going through situations. Ninety to 95%, I believe, just of the Rolling Fork area is pretty much destroyed. Uh, many areas are still without light and water. Church buildings have been destroyed. And you know, like I know, that in times like these, it becomes our responsibility, as Christians, as being our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We are our brother's keeper. It becomes our responsibility to help our sisters and our brothers. So yesterday, yesterday our state convention was in the area and we were actually feeding people. Uh, there are still individuals there in the Rolling Fork area because they don't have any power or water. They are in need of various things. So our state convention, we were there in Rolling Fork yesterday feeding uh, family. Uh, and, and we're going to be taking supplies later on. But right now, our president has initiated Operation Feeding Rolling Fork. Operation Feeding Rolling Fork. And yesterday, we fed close to 400 meals. Yesterday, but guess what? We ran out of food earlier than we uh, wanted to or anticipated. Uh, so this is what our president is seeking to do. Uh, he wants to double the amount of food we served on yesterday. So this is what this is what I am asking. Listen, we will be returning to Rolling Fork next Wednesday, uh, April the 5th, to feed the community again. Uh, our state convention has, has resources. we got grills on the ground. Uh, those individuals were grilling ribs, steak, meat, hamburger for people in the community. But this is what we are in need of. We are in need of side dishes to take the rolling fork next Wednesday. This is what we are asking we are in need of side dishes. Let me give you a few of those side dishes. Uh, pans of spaghetti, macaroni and cheese, green beans, corn, uh, baked beans, things of that nature. So listen, if you are willing to bless the people of Rolling Fork by preparing uh, side dishes, please, ma'am, please, sir, if you would be so kind to contact Sister LaShonda Price so we can get that information and, again, be a blessing to God's people. We will schedule a time of those side dishes to be dropped off at the church uh, next Tuesday. So uh, that's where we are as it relates to feeding uh, uh, the people there in Rolling Fork. Also, in about two weeks, our convention will be taking uh, items that area. And what our president has asked for uh, from our immediate area, one thing that many individuals are in need of, uh, the men in that area, uh, they are in need of undergarments, uh, our tops and bottoms. Uh, the women, uh, undergarments, things of that nature, they are coming in rather quickly. But uh, the male undergarments are, 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 are not being uh, brought down as quickly as we would like. So if practical, uh, uh, we will also start collecting male undergarments there at our church so we can take to roll it forward within the next few weeks. 
uh, I believe we will try to get a box uh, in place for those individuals who want to start bringing male undergarments, tops, and bottoms. Uh, different areas or re regions within our state convention will be bringing various things that so we've been uh, charged and challenged to bring male undergarments. But, but next week, we will be feeding the community again, and we're in need of our side dishes. Please, ma'am, please, sir, if you are willing to be a blessing to the people of Rolling Fort, contact Sister Price, and we will get all of that put together. All right, that's why I admit they thought on today, uh, the 37th numbers of Psalms, the 37th numbers of Psalms, verse 4 through 7. This particular passage of Scripture deals with the desires of your heart, the desires of your heart. Let me read to you what the psalmist says in the 37th number of Psalm, beginning with verse number four. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and watch this. The Word of God says, He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way to the Lord, trust also in him. He shall bring it to pass, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. That's in verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. The desires of your heart. The desires of your heart. Let me raise this question before we pray on today. What is your greatest desire? Lord, have mercy. What does your heart long for? What is your greatest desire? We often read today's passage of Scripture and assume that it means God will give us whatever we want. Now, the truth of the matter is, it's not uncommon for someone to talk about a prayer request and then add, God has promised to give me the desires of my heart. but. In this particular passage of Scripture, in this context, that Scripture reveals the Lord's principle for purifying our desires and issues, a call for what? Devotion to Him. So, so to delight in the Lord, this is what it means. It means to take pleasure. This is going to bless you. It means to take pleasure in discovering more about God and following Him. And as we do that, as we do, the Holy Spirit has a way of aligning our heart's desire with God. So, so the truth of the matter is, when we commit our way to God, Lord have mercy, we allow our thoughts, we allow our goals, we allow our lifestyle to be shaped by God's will and the things that God loves. In other words, in other words, let me say it this way. We acknowledge his right to determine whether our longing fits his plan, because the truth of the matter is, some of our plans don't fit God's plan. But the summer tells us this. If we rest in the Lord, if we wait patiently for the Lord, we can rely on God to work out circumstances, even when the desire He's given us things impossible. Lord have mercy. When God is our first love, our heart becomes focused on making his glory known with our life. And I raise the question on today before we pray. How many people can say that God is our first love? Lord have mercy. There's a song I used to hear, a uh, song back in, back in Macomb. It said, take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Remember how we felt when we fell in love with God the first time. Remember how we felt when we got committed to God the first time. We must allow God to be our first love. Now, in conclusion, before we pray, God wants us to give, well, God wants to give us our heart's desire. I, I do believe that. God wants to give us our heart's desire in his time when we are aligned with his will. Lord, have mercy. Because everything we pray for may not be in the will of God. So our prayers 
have to align with God's will. And as we learn to enjoy God, as we learn to rest in God, as we learn to delight ourselves in God, Lord have mercy. The Bible says right there in verse number four, if we delight ourselves in him, be committed fully to him, he shall give us the desires of our heart when they line up with his will. All right. Thank you all so much. We have uh, three individuals who are going to bless us. Thank you uh, for agreeing to pray with and for us on today. Listen, we have uh, Sister Matilda Chapman, Sister Peggy Jennings, and Sister Aditra Berry. Thank you, ladies, for agreeing to pray with and for us on today. And we're going to get started with you, Sister Aditra Berry, at this time if you're on the line. Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> May we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for allowing us to experience this day. Thank you for you have given us another day to be of service to one another and to love each other according to your word. Thank you for saving the lives of those persons who survived the storm that ravaged our state and neighboring states. Father, we thank you for always hearing and answering our prayers. Allow us to humbly receive your answers, which are according to your will, Father. Help us to recognize that you often protect us from ourselves and things that are not of you. Father, we want to pray a special prayer for our parents. Father, we ask that you give our parents strength, patience, and peace when dealing with our youth. Provide our parents with a tribe of Bible-based, Jesus-filled Christians who can pray with them and be a sounding board for them along the way. Help our parents to teach and guide our youth with a firm but loving arm. Allow our youth to be receptive of that love and guidance. Remind parents that even when children go astray, if they have been trained up in your word, they will surely return to you and your ways. For I have seen this with mine own eyes, Father, and am able to testify that your word is true, for we have all seen it and come short of your glory. Now, Father, we pray for the families affected by the storm. Help those affected to see your hand at work. Help them to understand that we don't need to know the how or the why, but we simply need to have faith that you will make everything all right. Father, let the people know that their restoration has already begun. Please provide all the necessities they need to make it. Father, please continue to allow for volunteers such as our very own pastor in conjunction with the state convention. Give the survivors comfort in the weight of them losing their loved ones. The weight is heavy right now, Father, but we know the final reward will be great. Father, we continue to pray for our leaders. Touch them and guide them according to your word. Let not their hearts be hardened to your will and your way. We also continue to pray for an end to the war in Ukraine. We, we also pray for the families of those who were killed in a holding facility in Mexico as they were waiting to be allowed into the United States. With so much going on in the world, we beseech you right now, Father, to just fix it. Amen. We pray this prayer in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Sister Beery, for getting us started today. Bless you greatly. Sister Peggy Jennings, if you're on the line, we submit to you at this time as you continue to lead us in prayer. Are you there, Sister Peggy? I am. I am. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, let us cover and bless the people and believers of Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today just to say thank you. 
We have so much, dear Heavenly Father, to be thankful for. Despite what we don't have, dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you anyway. We thank you, Jesus, for our health and strength. We thank you, Jesus, for the food and shelter that you provide for us on a daily basis. We thank you, Father, for our jobs and our careers that you have provided and given us just freely. Lord Jesus, we thank you for being better to us than we've ever been to ourselves, dear Heavenly Father. We just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping us. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for everything that you're doing individually in our lives. Thank you so much for the protection that you provide against our enemies. Thank you, Jesus, for blocking Satan when we fall weak. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, everything that we have, you have given to us, and we just want to say thank you. Everything that we know, dear Heavenly Father, you have taught us, and we just want to say thank you. We give you all glory and all praise and all honor today, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for our pastor and his family. We thank you for the word of God that is being spread all over the nation. We thank you for the highs and lows, dear Heavenly Father. Your name is the only name that I worship and praise, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we haven't always done right. We sin daily in our actions and in our words, dear Heavenly Father. And right now, I'm just asking you publicly for forgiveness of every single word and every single action. Please have mercy upon us, dear Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross and giving us salvation. I thank you, Jesus, for not giving up on us like some people will do, dear Heavenly Father. You're in no comparison to man, dear Heavenly Father. But then again, we thank you that you're nothing like man. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, because we're so unworthy of all these blessings that you give us. Lord, I personally want to thank you for my son, Malik. I want to thank you for all my sisters, dear Heavenly Father, all my brothers, dear Heavenly Father, near and far. I want to thank you for my aunt, my cousins, my nieces, my nephews and any other family member that I may have overlooked, dear Heavenly Father. I thank you for my church families, dear Heavenly Father. I thank you for my work families, dear Heavenly Father. I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for my heart is full. I thank you, Jesus, for what the foundation that has been built inside of me. I thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, please help me to win souls to you. Let me decrease so that you can increase. I give you all the glory and all the honor, dear Heavenly Father. Please know that I'm just a filthy rag ready to be used by you. And I thank you so much for hearing my day prayers and my night prayers. Lord Jesus, I pray that whoever is out there in the world that's troubled, lost, depressed, or whatever they have it may be, dear God. I pray that they find you quickly, Lord. Lord Jesus, just help us to stay in your word. Help us to grow spiritually on a daily. Help us to teach our young what it means to worship you only and not the sins of this world. Help us to guide our young ladies to respect themselves as ladies and nothing less. Help us to raise kingdom men and teach us, oh Lord, so that we can teach them how to be respectful of themselves and how to love themselves so that they can show love. Oh, Father God, our children need you. They have too many ungodly influences around them. My prayer goes out to all young people near and far. Oh, Lord, please just help them and change them. I believe, dear Heavenly Father, and we believe as believers that you still answer prayers. You still dry tears. You still make a way out of no way. Jesus, open all the doors of blessings that you have for us, dear Heavenly Father. I know you're watching over us. Lord, I thank you for being my source of life. I thank you for the hand of blessing that's leading and guiding me. I choose you as my number one priority, dear Heavenly Father. And as I look back over my life, I know I wouldn't have made it without you, Jesus. I just want to say how grateful I am to you, Lord. I give you all glory, and I love you so much. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sister Peggy, as well, Sister Aditra, you as well. We bless the Lord for those powerful prayers this afternoon. Thank you so much. Uh, Sister Tilda Chapman, a uh, third individual who's going to pr- pray and bless us at this time. If you're on the line, Sister Chapman, we would love to hear from you at this moment. Yes, I'm here, Pastor. Thank let you. Us co- let us continue in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this day thankful and so grateful for this day. I pray we walk in your steps. You have ordered for us. Help us to be steadfast, unmovable, and stay close to you so we can feel your presence as we go about this day and every day. Lord, we thank you for every blessing you have bestowed upon us. I pray we use them for uh, those in need. Lord, I pray for strength of your people today. Lord, I bind the presence of life that come to weigh I will steer it down. Help us to not quit, but run this race faithfully and help us to find strength on our journey. Please, Lord, heal the land. Bring peace and let your Holy Spirit lead the way. Please, Lord, we are Standing in the need of prayer right now. I pray we let you come into our hearts to remove all evil spirits and allow you to be the head of our life. Heavenly Father, I pray for the storm victims who are hiding trying to cope with loss and devastation going on in their lives. Lord, comfort them in a way that I know you can. I pray for our church family, Reverend Tobias and his family, our children, and all the names that were called on the list. Heavenly Father, we know you are able. We can we know you can do anything but fail. Heavenly Father, help us to lean and depend on your holy and righteous name. His blessing I ask in your name for Christ's sake. Amen. 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 Lord have mercy. Thank you, Sister Chapman. As we continue this final prayer on today, God, our Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for life. We thank you for each and every experience we have, whether they be good or bad, because your word tells us that all things work together. We thank you for the good and bad, because we know that it's working for our good. God, we thank you so much for speaking directly into our lives through your word on today, God. And we admit, we acknowledge, we confess to you right now, God, that it's true that many of us feel so alone and trapped in the situations that we are facing right now. God, we acknowledge that. We admit that to you right now. Many of us, God, some of us, we don't know what to do. We don't know what step to take. We don't know what to say. God, we don't know where to turn. Many of us have even tried to give a problem to you, but in some way we continue to hold on to it and carry the load ourselves. And because of that, God, it is heavy up on our shoulder. It is starting to break us, and we need you like never before. So right now, God, at this very hour of the day, at this moment, we are giving it back to you. We are throwing the full weight of our burdens, our sins, 
everything that we are carrying and struggling with, God, our cares, we, we give it back to you, God, for you to place on your shoulders. Thank you, God, for taking taking our burdens, our sins from us. And we thank you, God, for filling us, filling me, filling all of us with the strength that we need to press through this time in our life. We want to have the ability to press through. God, we thank you for the word given on today, reminding us that our desires, our heart desires must line up with your will. And if they do, you've already promised that if we delight ourselves on on you and in you, you will give us the desires of our heart. God, we pray. For all of our church members, those who are in need of special prayer, those names that were called, God, you remember who they are. You heard the names, and even if we didn't call the names, you know who they are. God, we pray that you would do what they need, be what they need, give them what they need at this season in their life, because you know better than we know ourselves. God, so we pray for all of the bereaved families, uh, those individuals who have lost families through this a uh, terrible storm, hurricane, uh, tornado that just happened in the Silver City and the Rolling Fork area. God, we pray for those families, those individuals who are experiencing bereavement in their homes. God, we don't know why some things happen. We don't know why you allow them to happen, but we trust you in the midst of whatever we're going through because we know that you love us unconditionally. Thank you for our church, God. Thank you for uh, how you've been blessing, sustaining, and keeping us. And we believe what the Word has said. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard some of the wonderful things that you have in store for us. So, God, we are, we are anticipating marvelous, magnificent things and works to continue to be manifested right before our very eyes. And it's not because we are so good. It's not because we are great. But it is because of your grace and your mercy. And, God, we will forever share the story and tell the testimony of how great thou art. Forgive us of our sins and keep us in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Thank God and amen again. Listen, we thank you again for calling and participating in our midday prayer on today. Listen, I have received some phone calls from some of you on the line. Please, ma'am, please, sir, I will return some of those calls on today. Yesterday was such a busy day, uh, but I will return some of those calls on today. I will uh, promise you that I will get back with some of you on today. Listen, Sunday morning at 9 a.m., we are going to have a great, great Sunday school lesson. Keep that on your calendar. Matter of fact, be prepared to call and participate. And if you are willing to uh, uh, fix or prepare some uh, side dishes, some of those dishes that were named, please, ma'am, please, sir, contact Sister LaShonda Price so we can have all of that in line together and ready to deliver and serve in rolling for next Wednesday. Until Sunday morning, may the grace of God be with you, and I pray that you have a great, great rest of the day. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. conference will automatically end in 60 seconds.